warning, this podcast contains spoilers. And welcome to the Asina TV podcast for Legion Season 2, Episode 5, Chapter 13. I'm your host, Cleo. With me, I have Jacob. Hello. Hi. Hello. Just so we're clear, we were not watching Doctor Strange, right? This was an actual Legion episode? This was an actual Legion episode. Um, what made you think it was Doctor Strange? The opening scene, Lenny in the room. I'm like, what is this? Right, because it was upside why down. Does this look, why does this look like that? Uh, yeah, I thought about that. That the upside down room is clearly intentional. Uh, they is it a floor that I'm not getting. They built that room upside down on purpose. The purpose for why they did it on purpose, I have not a clue. Uh, that kind of just goes into the stack of. Uh, I think this architecture, the architecture in this season is bonkers. Bonkers. And I don't know if that has anything to do with uh, the fact that none of this might be real. <laughs> I'm still, I keep holding on to that. I'm like, there's always the possibility none of this is real. Are we still in the framework? I don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. LMDs running around everywhere. Did uh, I do that. No, I, 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 I have like 50 different thoughts in my head right now at this very moment, and I don't know which one to pick to start. Uh, probably Amy. 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 I'm upset. Amy. Amy. Bob. Amy. I'm upset. Amy. 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 Yeah, we mentioned her in the beginning of this season, at least episode one or two, and it took, I'm embarrassed to say it took me a minute or two to to realize that was Amy, but once I did, I was like, oh shit, that's where Amy is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and this whole episode, everyone who spoke to Lemmy just kept saying whose body is that whose body is that and i'm like this is this is not gonna be good whoever's body this is is well i thought it might have been sydney's i thought it might have been uh david's mother i don't know why i thought that no i thought it was sydney's um just because like to me that would be the most shocking thing mm, yeah. but of course this is legion we're talking about so i'm like oh okay well uh, fuck you <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I'm that whole last scene was just really um that was tough to watch. Yeah, so let's not talk about it anymore because I'm upset. Let's not, yeah. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're we're skipping too far ahead. So um We are, I'm sorry. I told you I had fifty thoughts in my head and it just landed on yeah. Amy. <laughs> I feel like we had to get that one out of the way just because it would have been like it killed me through the entire episode after I'd watched it and I had to watch it again just so I can like you know process what had happened. I watched this episode twice. Mm -hmm. The second time, I I still knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I was still upset for sure. But like actually, actually, when I started the first time, I actually. Um, because I watched um, them, I, I watched it the second time this morning, and I had actually forgot about Amy, and then I was quickly reminded two minutes into the episode, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, I don't want to watch anymore, but I'm going to, because I need to remember what happened. Yeah. See, I thought maybe if I didn't watch it, then it wouldn't be real, but unfortunately that's not how things work. Yeah. Um, you see, I keep forgetting the, the Division Three guy who walks with a cane. I keep forgetting his name. Uh, they don't even have it in the description of this episode. Um, I don't remember either, but, but I, I, remember, I remember liking him. Yeah, I love him. 
in th this season especially i just love the way he comes into a room he asks the he's very smart he asks the questions that need to be asked even if people don't want to give him the right answer mm. and i love how he comes in he sets up his notebook his pens and then asks her questions and then when she answers he just goes huh <laughs> he's like scribble something down she's just like what's happening i'm looking up his name because i remember liking him yeah because he yeah, had uh, his own little, own little backstory, which I loved. Mm -hmm. Cute. And and Lemmy in this. Uh, is Clark. It Lenny, Lenny with an N or M's. Uh, N. Lenny, Lenore, right, right, Lenore, Lenny. Uh, in this episode, kept you know trying to to prove you know it was her. She was this whole, her own free will. Blah blah blah. But she kept describing a memory of her grandmother when her grandmother would give her vodka out of a soda can. <laughs> now, which is a very is, alcoholic grandma thing to do. Yes, but this is not uncommon. I know people who have, who have grandmothers that do this. I had a grandmother that did this. It's... It took yeah. me back, child. <laughs> That's really bad. Well. I, I, this was, and it was mentioned many times, and I feel like this, it, there's a reason this is the memory she described so many times. I wonder what that reason is. Oh. Because David even says, he's like, I, I hear all the ideas in your head. I can't tell which ones are Farouk's and which ones are yours. I'm I'm wondering like how much is this really Lenny and how much control I, does Farouk have? I mean I just the way events have unfolded, I always like, you know, keep one eye open yeah. when I sleep. I wanna believe that it is Lenny because I love Lenny and I want Lenny back. I know, um, me too. But like, you know, you can't but they put that seed of doubt in us and it's sprouting and I don't like it, but you know, I, I think, now I just assume that everyone's evil, and that everyone's dead, and or, <laughs> it's just something, I just always think something bad's happening, I don't like that feeling, but good job, paranoia. Yeah, no, this show definitely, like, stirs the paranoia. Um, and actually, that's perfect with the narrator segment in this episode, because he talks about patterns that we see that don't, you know. Humans look for patterns in the world. Whether they exist or not, whether they're real or not, we're looking for patterns because it helps us survive. Uh, and that leads to conspiracy. And they definitely put that in this episode on purpose to make us think there's a conspiracy, which there probably is because... Uh, Probably conspiracy. More conspiracies. Oh, this show is like this show itself is a conspiracy. I don't like it. And I'm I'm wondering where the whole thing with the narrator is going. Yeah, this damn narrator. It can't just be so as separate as it's been, because in 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 a lot of the narrator segments we see uh, Oliver with I. It's mostly been children. Like, he's performing experiments on these children. The thing with the color, like, teaching the kid the wrong color, red. Like, red was green. And then having him walk into traffic. And then, uh, you know, this kid, they're teaching him, a, you know, stuff. And then it's just conspiracy written on the board. You know, like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with these kids. And Oliver. And I don't know how much of that is Farouk. Probably all of it's Farouk, but who am I kidding? I mean, you know, th this show, like, trips out with my mind because Lenny's eyes... I swear I'm not crazy. What? Lenny's eyes are brown. Yes. So, this whole interrogation of, like, what color are my eyes, and dude says they're brown, but they're blue. Brown is what he remembers. But am I remembering this wrong? Her eyes are brown, right? Her eyes are brown. 
He said her like, eyes this, are brown. This episode made me crazy. It made me think I was crazy. His, ever since the slug, uh, uh, the slug chicken crawled into Wallace's ear, his memory, his powers, they've been off. It's been, it's, he's not been working right. So he's, rem he said brown because that's what he remembers from before he had any issues with the slug chicken. Because right now, his powers are not working properly. Because he even tries to get into Lemmy's head. And I feel like they're making you believe that it's Farouk that's fucking with his head. But it's, I think it's the chicken. I like that. <laughs> I just think it's so funny we're calling it the slug chicken. Because <laughs> that's what it is, right? <laughs> It is. Until proven otherwise, just like the Butter King. Until proven otherwise, that's what it is. <laughs> well, he's still the Butter King to me. He's, you're right. You're absolutely right. This episode freaked me out because he did the laugh. Like, that weird Butter King laugh that he did in season one when he was entered uh, Amy's house. I was like, no! <laughs> Stop! The Butter King is a creepy motherfucker and I don't <sighs> like it. Yeah, um, no, it, that took me back to, to season one, and I was just like, no, I don't want to go there. No, season one scared me. Like, legit scared yeah. me. Yeah. I feel like we're ramping up the fear now. I think we're getting into it. And... I think season one scared me. This season disturbs me. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, we can do, but, I, I like, but I do like this cool sequence of going into Lenny's head. What's going on in there, Lenny? Yeah. Oh! Bottom. Before we move away from Wallace, though, he not only, I guess maybe he remembers the slug chicken going into his ear, but he sees the face under the basket of the Admiral. So, just so we're clear, this episode confirmed that it's it's not his head. He's wearing the basket. He's wearing but a basket. He's wearing the basket. He's a but lizard it, man. But we are not, we cannot rule out that his head is still a basket true we can't because <laughs> this is vision this I think is that would vision. be hilarious i think that would be hilarious yes. if they took off the basket and it's still a basket. it's another basket <laughs> but it's a nice fancier basket a nice you know. a fancier basket no it's actually one of those um target baskets for your shopping yes yes the red with the with the holes yes. yeah but it's under under the basket he sees a lizard man and it's like okay what's happening now and we already know that the admiral's been spying on everyone he's been watching video of everyone in division 3 and now he's a lizard person <laughs> I, I don't know what's happening <laughs> doctor who what i was at the end of this episode i mean i think i was i was just floored by the end but I thought I had a grasp of what was happening. I was like, okay, so they they, they found uh, Lemmy's body. and Did they find... They, yeah, they found her body. They got the DNA. They stuck it in... That, that's the one from the desert, right? Amy, yeah, the body in the desert is uh, was, was Lemmy's body. Uh, and, and at the end, I was like, okay, so there those are the facts. But now that we're sitting down and talking about all the extra stuff, I'm like, I actually have no idea what the fuck happened. <laughs> Uh, can we talk about this place that I hope if... So, with this whole Disney acquiring uh, Fox's scripted stuff, and that includes mm. FX, and you acquire Legion, can we please have this donut cart in Disneyland, please? <gasps> the Dead Sea Donuts? The Dead Sea fucking donuts. I thought it was so cute. Cart. That I donut love cart that. is so cute. I would buy donuts from that. Because I just have here in my notes, I wrote down, donut cart! And I'm like, oh yeah, the donut cart that looks like submarine. Yeah, and it's shaped like a little submarine. It's so cute. It reminds me of just like a, like a, weird ice cream truck, but for donuts. <laughs> are donut carts? Food uh, trucks are a donut cart. Food trucks are a thing. I don't know if, I don't know if there is a sub genre of food trucks that are specifically donuts. I would want one of those. I like donuts. 
speaking of donuts, I'm just going to go on a rant. Voodoo Donuts just opened up in Orlando in Universal Studios. Go, go get yourself a Voodoo Donut. They opened one here in Universal Studios Hollywood. They make some crazy ass donuts that look like voodoo dolls and faces and like creepy shit. And then you can buy a dozen donuts in a coffin shaped box. It's an actual, but it's an actual like mini coffin that's made by a coffin maker. No way. Fucking awesome. It's an actual legit coffin made by a coffin maker out of wood to hold your donuts. I'm mad I live in New York and that's nowhere near either or uh, Universal's. <laughs> well, look, 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 okay, see if there's one near you because you gotta try some voodoo donuts. Okay. It's just voodoo donuts. We're gonna look. Uh, Let's see. Back to the episode. Yeah, donuts. back to the episode. I'm like struggling, struggling. Like, what, what the fuck else can we talk about? Like, uh, da, 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 da. We can talk about um. What can we talk about? Uh, let's see what I have in my notes here. I got uh, some notes on Oliver. Um, Oliver, who I'm still um, I, I want Oliver and um, Melanie just to, like. Can we have a scene, please, with them? Because they need to like, you know, interact and like do the thing. Yeah, I. My heart. I'm really not sure, like, how much of Oliver is invested in anything in this world, you know what I mean? Because he's already expressed, like, he doesn't know what his reality really is. Nothing really feels real to him. I don't know if Melanie will even feel real to him, if he'll even care, no offense, but... Mm-hmm. I really don't know. No, there's there's no, there's no Voodoo Donuts uh-huh. near New York. Sad, sadness. You like I like how the biggest take- takeaway from this episode is that there's no food doing that. Too. Yeah, no, very sad. I'm very sad now. Uh, anyway, yeah, no, I'm I'm not really sure. Like, if we have a scene with Oliver and Melanie, it, it might it might go really poorly. It already kind of went poorly in season one. He yeah, but now Farouk's involved, and I think it could be deadly. Yeah, I don't like that. And I'd almost rather them never interact again in their lives than have it go poorly. But, like, I want to see, like, the episode where we go back and, um, like, we see how they met, and it's great, and they met up, like, they met at the Poetry Club, and in my in my head canon is they met at a Poetry Club. Yeah. Um, and he was actually on a date with somebody else, a nice Chinese woman, and Melanie was there, but she wasn't there to do poetry, she just had to go to the bathroom. And in my mind, he was just, like, so infatuated with her that he follows her into the bathroom. Oh, God. And she thinks he's, like, so, like, clueless, but also endearing. Yeah, which he is. <laughs> and, like, he has such a way with words that, like, he writes a poem, like, while he's staring at her, while she's washing her face in the bathroom. I feel like this is something he would do. Hmm. I feel like Oliver's a good poet, okay? He's got a way with words. But sometimes he doesn't understand. Yeah. Words. Yeah, he spent so much time alone. <clears throat> I do, I, he does not have, like, a healthy relationship with the world. I'm just, I'm scared for him, really. <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm scared for everybody at this point. That's true. I'm so, so upset. Yeah. I'm so upset. Him and Farouk's back and forth, though, is really very entertaining. Well, his back and forth with anybody is entertaining. That's true. He's so char- it's scary how charismatic he is. I I would I want to listen to him talk in like his English flowing into French all day. All day I could listen to him. Yeah. And then he makes a reference about uh, being a giant crab. He did? He uh, was the giant crab in Moana. Really? Yeah, he was. Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> I thought he, in the episode, mentioned he was a giant crab. <laughs> no, I want... I, this sh- this isn't that kind of show where, like, they reference, like, straight out reference other things, but, like, yeah. I feel like, you know, as, like, a nod to, like, Disney fans, he'd be, like, there'd be, like, an episode where he, like, encounters a giant crab. <laughs> That'd be so funny. Oh, man. Oof. I'm still just, like, so floored. What else is there to talk about? I feel like we talked about everything, and I'm just well, scared. I, I feel like this is a, um... Well, this was, like, a very straightforward episode. I mean, there's not a lot of character development. There was some development yeah. on 
what happened to certain characters that I was wondering about. Yeah. But, um... Oh, and I mean, at the end, David, you know, kind of realizes that it's Amy's body, and he freaks out, and I just felt so bad. It was heartbreaking, honestly. It was really heartbreaking. And not because, well, one, because I love Amy. Yeah. You know, I feel like Amy was... Amy was a relationship... Had a relationship with David that I like seeing because, you know, you have often in like media and especially in children's media, you do see a lot of siblings fighting and, you know, they just generally don't go along. And, you know, every so often they might have one episode where they share like a sentimental moment, but then they just go back to hating each other again. Or you get the rare case on the other side where you have siblings who get along too well and they don't fight at all and you know it's realistic i like amy and david's relationship since season one um because you could tell like their relationship was strained and you know they weren't close but you could tell they still loved each other and amy was trying to you know be there for david because they didn't have anybody else they only had each other yeah that to me was one of the most powerful um, aspects of season one and one of the reasons why I loved it so much is because I love the relationship in the show and their relationship to me seemed like so like realistic for well at least in my case because I can't you know talk about every everybody else but at least me and my siblings it you know kind of struck home for me because I do have you know that type of relationship with um, my brother and my sister where we're not close, but, you know, we are there for each other. And so, you know, I, I like that. I like seeing siblings being portrayed in a positive way, but not a perfect way. Yeah. Um. Shit, I had a thought and it's gone. Never mind. I mean, th this show does... When we talk about this show, my mind always wanders to other things because this show is, like, so deep... Yeah. But also, like, so it hits home very well on certain things. Mm -hmm. And to deep bottom, it's weird. It's like, because, like, we're talking about the show with the fucking pile of lard, the chicken slug, and bas basket case and bubble heads. Yeah. And the, sh the show, oh, like. That, that's the bubble heads. They. All right. Amy was describing a dream she had. She said something in like a sing-songy voice about some kind of robot collective or something. And the way she sung it, she sounded like those robots. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm right. That's just what I thought when I heard her say that dream. And I'm just like... Is she, um, is, she, the is she the album? robots? Did they base the robots on her? I'm confused. I don't know. I mean, if, see, I don't know if they have like a connection or something. And if they did, like, I don't, I don't know how, 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 I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That's this show. Yeah, that that's show. show. Um, but donuts. This show, the, donuts. this episode, like the main takeaways from the show is uh, Amy's gone and donuts. Yeah, I'm and wondering what? if Amy's in there with uh, Len. In the, Lenny. In the car? Oh no, oh, no, in there with Lenny. I was I, in there with Lenny. I mean, I think that's they're, possible. Yeah, and they're gonna open up a donut cart. I wonder if if her and Lenny are gonna share a consciousness in in the, in a similar well, way that Farouk and and David well, did. Farouk um, wants a body. Um, yeah. Lenny wants a body. I think if Amy, because we've seen this before, if a Amy is in there with Lenny and Oliver, can they all get their bodies back? It, if so, how are we going to do that? Because like that, that, that's like a running theme. I think all I think there's a lot of characters in this season in particular that want a body and 
I just there, there's questions that I have, like how are we getting the body? Whose bodies are we using? Or is this going to be like a vision situation where we make a body and it's weird and creepy and it doesn't look like a robot? It looks like somebody with their red face paint. Um, oh. Yeah. What if everyone just gets android bodies? And then it's then it's this whole LMD thing, and then I don't like it. Well, um, you know, I have automatonophobia, so. Well, then maybe so, not that. The things with robots scare me. I'm afraid of the pirates at Disneyland. Oh, no. Not the animatronics. <laughs> um, no, they scare me. Like, I remember I the, the ride broke down, and it's a water ride, so we had to get up onto the sets. And the pirates, uh, they were still singing, but they weren't moving. Dang. I mean, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we said all we can about this particular episode. Um, I think. Like, crazy things happen, but not a lot of things happened. Yeah. So, so what What of next episode? What amazing in-depth synopsis do we have? What could have been dot dot dot. That... <laughs> <laughs> Great usually, I, a usually I can think of like a stupid ass scenario from these synopsis. I can't even think of no, one. There's nothing for this one. This okay. one is so vague. It's the vaguest of vague. Uh, I feel like it could be like what could have been da da da. There's going to be. It's going to be like a wonderful life situation where yeah. uh, he is in a reality um, where he doesn't exist, and he gets to see like how everyone like fares without him, and it turns out like everything's all great and everything's wonderful, and it turns out, you know, the, the universe does not need him, and um, yeah. <clears throat> then he comes back and he ruins the lives uh, for everybody else. <laughs> Perfect. Now if that's not the plot, I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> I don't know what this show anymore. <laughs> I know, there's like... I'm in, like, constant disbelief. And I feel like every time I watch an episode and I'm like, okay, I'm pretty sure I know what's going on, and then we sit down to talk about it, I'm like, I have no, no nothing. Is this no show place. good or bad? I don't know. This show's amazing. <laughs> I don't know if it is, though. Uh, I love it. No, this show's good. I, I love this show. I love watching this show because it makes me feel this way. Um, mm -hmm. And the show can do that. Doctor Who comes close. But then Doctor Who pulls some shit, and I'm like, this show does sci-fi. This, this show does sci-fi in its own weird way. I don't think it's sci-fi anymore. They, they made something else. Yeah. What would you call this? This is another genre that they just made up. What is yeah, this? Yeah, they, they made it up. I don't know. Uh, it's the mind fuck. There we go. That's what it is. <laughs> and there was a mind fuck last season. <laughs> yes, there was. Uh, All right. I'm good. <laughs> Jay I'm good. I'm, not, I'm not good, but sure, no. we're we're done. Okay. We're gonna we're just gonna go through life just like saying we're good, and and one day, one day it's gonna be true. I swear. <laughs> so Jake, where can the people find you? You can find me and all of my giggles and gory monsters and mayhem on YouTube at Jacob Salazar, or you can find me on Twitter to meet the at life at Tino Orland. That's C-O-N-O-W-G-R-E-L-E-N-D. Join the Norland Society. You can find me on social media at Cleomoto, and you can find me on Etsy at Cleomoto Crafts. You can find all of us at ASO TV Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, Google Plus, right here on Twitch and on YouTube uh, for our videos of the podcast that we do. Catch us on live on Twitch if you like that sort of a thing um our schedules if, if you don't watch it anyway our schedules down below bye bye except i keep forgetting to stick legion in that schedule i'll do it eventually